What we teach these people is looking ahead, looking into the corners. What you need to do to drive a race car efficiently and at a high speed, they'll take that away from here and they're going to go out in the street and hopefully use that eye technique to save their butts when the time comes. Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and episode 47 of One Race Wonders, a series looking at every Formula One driver who took part in a single Grand Prix race. We have covered drivers from every era of Formula One, like Ernst Luth and Don Bowman from the 1950s, to the 2020s with Jack Aitken, and plenty in between, including manufacturers along with drivers. Today's subject is the start of a trilogy somewhat. The next three One Race Wonders We'll be looking at the three Swedish drivers of the 1970s who took part in a single Grand Prix. Sweden had some of the best Formula 1 drivers of the time. The likes of Ronnie Peterson, Gunnar Nilsson and Ryan Vissel had done the country proud in Formula 1. But there were others and today we are starting our look at Sweden's other guys with Bertil Roos. So check out the One Race Wonder playlist, subscribe to the channel and let's jump into the video. Bertil Roos was born in Gothenburg during the Second World War, not that the Swedes would have even really noticed given they were a neutral nation. He started racing in the late 60s and whilst most Swedes had their early successes in the Swedish Formula 3 Championship, Roos made his name in Super V Racing, a form of junior category that existed for a couple of decades at around about Formula 3 level, kind of the modern day equivalent of Formula Regional Americas. Bertil Roos won the 1973 American Super V Championship, taking three wins, but he also raced in Super V Championships in Europe. A lot of Swedes did, and a lot found some success in Formula Super V. Kenneth Persson won the German Championship, and Dakar winner Freddy Kutlinski won the European. A name you may have heard if you're familiar with his granddaughter, Michaela Arlen Kutlinski. Super V in America was the natural step before Can-Am and IndyCar, whilst the European Championship was the step below European Formula 2. Bertil Roos did race in Formula 2, first for the Dart team in 1973, and the Fred Opert team, who he ran with in Europe and America. I believe he may have started working at Fred Opert's driving school in Pennsylvania around this time, a business he would later own and rename the Bertil Roos Racing School. He scored points in European Formula 2, as well as Super V and various Formula Atlantic series on both sides of the Atlantic. Somehow this led to an opportunity to race in Formula 1 with the Shadow team. Shadow were not in a great place in 1974. They had joined Formula 1 the previous year and got some pretty good results. Jackie Oliver and George Fulmer had scored a podium each for the American team in their debut year, but full-time driver Peter Revson was killed in practice for the 1974 South African Grand Prix. Brian Redmond stepped up for a few races, but this was always a temporary arrangement. Bertil Roos was given the chance to race in his home Grand Prix at the Scandinavian Raceway in Anderstorp. With limited experience in a Formula 1 car, it was always going to be an uphill battle for Roos. It didn't help he qualified 23rd for the race, with a time nearly 3 seconds slower than teammate Jean-Pierre Jarriers although he did qualify ahead of future race winner Carlos Pace in a 30s. The race was a short one for Bertil Roos, and therefore so was his Formula 1 career sadly. He was out by lap 2 with transmission issues. Any chance of him getting future drives for Shadow were rendered impossible, as apparently he did not get on well with the team. I can't find a solid reason why. The only theory I've seen is he may have wanted to make changes to the setup, and Shadow didn't trust a rookie driver, and so refused. I have no idea if that is true, entirely possible that one of the mechanics ate his sandwiches and a knife fight broke out. Either way, Roos was out and Tom Price was in. Might have been for the best for the Swede as Price himself was killed when he hit a marshal at the 1977 South African Grand Prix. As for Bertil Roos, he returned to America. In 1975 and 1976, Bertil Roos finished runner-up in the Canadian Formula Atlantic Series. First to Bill Brack and then to Gilles Villeneuve. A year later, Villeneuve went on to make his Formula 1 debut. It was around this time that Roos purchased his driving school and started racing under the Roos Racing School banner in Formula Atlantic and the Can Am series. It was in the Can Am where he took two under two litre titles in 1982 and 1983. After that, he began to wind down his racing career 
and quit full-time motorsport in 1987. He continued to run his racing school for the next three decades, but sadly he passed away in 2016. I can't find any mention of the Roos Racing School existing after 2020, and I fear it may have been a victim of the pandemic, or maybe Bidenomics. I don't know, I'm not American. With a Super V Championship, twice runner-up in the Canadian Formula Atlantic, and a two-time Can-Am under 2-litre champion, not to mention a Formula 1 drive under his belt, Bertil Roos was definitely a successful race driver. It's just a shame he didn't race in the kart series. Stefan Johansson and Kenny Brack would go on to represent Sweden in that series, and I feel Bertil Roos could have been the first Swedish star at the top level of American single-seaters. Instead, he took his wins where he could, and ran a successful racing school on the side for good measure. Oh yeah, yeah, he's also a Formula 1 one race wonder, even if his one appearance in Formula 1 was rather brief. So that was the story of Bertil Roos and his single F1 race. As I mentioned earlier, this is the beginning of a Swedish one race wonder trilogy, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, what do you think of Bertil Roos? Check out the One Race Wonder playlist. It's been a great series that I've enjoyed making episodes for and will continue to do so for as long as I have breath. We have covered some really intriguing careers such as Tiff Nadell, Bob Sed, Dieter Cuesta, Konu, and most recently, Jay Chamberlain. Thank you very much for watching and most importantly of all, have a good one. If you're looking for a unique approach to corporate entertainment, Consider Girdle Roos Racing School. We have what it takes to add excitement to your next corporate outing and make it a life-changing event. 